Hello there, folks. Unless you uh, immediately recognise my voice, um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Mr Newton. I'm one of the science teachers here at Ashby School. Um, and today I'm going to start taking you through uh, a series of lessons, a series of four lessons about revision. Um, as teachers, we routinely ask you to revise all the time. And um, some of you may be really confident in how to revise and how best to revise for you. Uh, but some of you may be lacking a bit of knowledge in actually what that means and how to revise properly. Um, also, like what the best strategies are for different subjects or different subject areas. Uh, or maybe even you just don't have the slightest idea how to start revising. Um, so hopefully these four lessons will take you through quite nicely the, um, the processes of how to use certain um, tools for revision. So today we're going to be looking at flashcards um, and hopefully everybody will be able to take something away from it. Um, whilst your teachers are kind of getting the lesson sorted and doing the register and whatnot, um, I just want you to have a look at those two questions on the starter screen there. So the starter question is just, is it good to listen to music whilst revising? Does it help your revision? Um, and then the blue box question there, like what is the best type of revision do you feel? What's the best type? Um, teachers, just for your knowledge, the students will require some um, colour pens and uh, some flashcard making material today not bags and bags of it but just enough so they can make a few each um, and students if you've got uh, colored pens yourselves some highlighters or even some colored cards that would make the world a difference to today's lesson so feel free just to pause me for a moment whilst you um get all that handed out and register has taken all that kind of stuff and students if you answer those two questions and have a bit of a discussion with the person next to you about them OK, that should hopefully have um, given you all a, an opportunity to answer those two questions and have a chat with each other about them. Uh, we'll now carry on and delve into what flashcards are about. But before we do, I just want to kind of bring to life to you what the whole point of revision is. Revision's not for the purpose of relearning something. You should have had uh, ample amount of lesson time to learn the content and you're still learning content as you go through. Revision, the whole purpose of it is to strengthen the neural connections. So those connections within the nerves in your brain to take the information from your long term memory towards your hand to write the answer down. Um, so you already know the, the content, but this is just about being able to bring that knowledge to bear a bit easier. So when we start talking about the different techniques here, some of them may seem a bit alien or a bit pointless to you, but there's a genuinely a lot of research that's gone into strengthening these nerve connections in the brain. Um, so is listening to music good? Well, the short answer to that is, uh, in fact, no, it's, it's not useful to you at all. There's a study that was commissioned um, and then published in The Guardian back in 2016. And this is news to me, by the way, because I always used to revise listening to music. Um, but students who study in a quiet environment can actually recall knowledge far easier than those who listen to music. Um, and that was tested over lots of different types of music. Uh, so it doesn't matter. Don't sit there and think, well, it's OK, because I'll listen to this type of music. But no, genuinely don't listen to anything whilst you're revising. Silence is golden here, it really is. And that was that was news to me. Um, and in, in terms of what the best type of um, revision is, they vary types to type depending on what you're revising. But generally speaking, it's the revision strategy that you're willing to do. And it's the one that best fits your circumstances, your lifestyle, um, and the one that you are actually going to commit yourself to doing it. Um, there's certain things that lend themselves better to one subject area than the other. But if you're willing to give revision a go, and you all should be, because it's a really tough year for you now, um, you've got to pick the one that works for you or pick the, the few that work for you. What I would suggest is that you try all different types of revision strategies and then see which one works best for you, because you might find that actually you like that style. Um, but then, you know, you oh, let's say you're, you're in a bit of a pinch for time and you haven't got loads of time to make a beautiful mind map. Let's just go through some flashcards quickly. Then when you've got a bit more time, you could commit a bit more time to like exam questions or mind mapping. But yeah, the one that you're going to do is the best. Let's just take a break from my irritating brummy voice for a moment. Um, and just have a quick chat to each other and people around you and have a little bit of a class discussion if your teacher is able to facilitate that. Who actually uses flashcards? Who amongst you uses them? And please be honest. Uh, you may just want to do a quick show of hands there. Um, and 
what are they best for? So like what kind of revision are flashcards best for? Just just one minute, talk to the people around you and then maybe have a bit of a quick class discussion. Teachers, pause me um, and then give me a, a replay when you're ready to carry on. OK, so hopefully you've had sufficient time to have a good discussion about that. Um, ideally, if everyone does flashcards, that would be fantastic. But I'm a realist. I know not everyone's going to. Um, and I would hope that people are using them properly. But even those of you who are using them, you may pick up some good nuggets uh, of information and techniques to use today, hopefully. So let's have a look through them. Um, so flashcards are really useful for learning things and revising things like quick facts. Um, being a science teacher myself, I know the massive importance in remembering and memorising equations. So like um, in not only just the skill of rearranging equations, but what each component is within them. Um, and terminology as well. Uh, terminology is one of those things that at GCSE and, and A level, we are so picky, particularly with um, subjects such as biology. We're very particular uh, about what terminology you use and the definitions which go with them. So we really must be use, uh, using flashcards to remind ourselves of those things. Um, in addition to that, strengthening recall um of these using flashcards it really helps you to to bring that knowledge to bear and to use it in the exam um but then also it helps develop these neural connections and what is the most important part i feel of mine of um flashcard use is identifying your weaker areas uh, and that will become clear as we go through the, this um th this lesson about how to use them so let's go through it then step one this is the first thing that everyone must do before they put any pen to paper. You've got to find the information from a reputable place, find the information that is correct and that you need to use. All right. So I would advise either using your books that you're working in at school um, the CGP revision guides, which you can see up on screen now, the areas like BBC Bite Size, so long as you're using the correct page being the correct um, uh, exam board and whatnot. Uh, I would avoid just flat out Google searches because realistically you might get things from different exam boards. You might get knowledge which is too higher pitched in terms of you looking at more uh, A level or degree knowledge. Um, so stick to the, the the recommended sources. But here's the bottom the, the 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 bottom line of it. There is no point in you revising and making beautiful flashcards of things that you are already quite secure with your knowledge. It it's quite literally a waste of time you must revise the stuff that you feel is difficult. So choose what knowledge you need to revise and choose the tough areas of it. So for example, if you're going to look at, um, uh, let, let's take something that I find uh, easy to associate with. So looking at biology, if you think, well, I'm dead easy, you know, looking at what cells and what types of cells there are, difference between plants and animal cells, don't bother making flashcards about them first. Focus on your harder areas that are the areas that you struggle with, things like required practicals, things like um, microscope calculations, that kind of jazz. So pick the area that you find difficult. Step two is, of course, making it. Now, these are um, I've looked at lots of different YouTube videos when we started looking at producing these series of lessons. And some of the YouTube videos on how to make flashcards are a bit rubbish, actually, because they have way too much knowledge and way too much writing on those flashcards and they're nowhere near useful if you're putting too much writing on a side of um on a flashcard you might as well just combine all your flashcards together and make it a big a4 sheet of paper it's quite literally useless what we need to do now is to do very small cards so like if you split an a4 paper a uh, piece of paper up into eight pieces that's the size that we're looking for um, write a question, one question on one side and write the answer on the other side. And if we can make that one sentence maximum, that's perfect. Yeah, but the, the fewer words, the better. Plenty of pictures um, and symbols and little things like diagrams, as you'll see in my examples in a moment, they make really strong neural connections. We are used to seeing words associate with other words. But if you can associate a word with a picture or a word with a symbol, um, then that codes the information in a slightly different way, which makes essentially builds an extra bridge between your long term store of memory and your ability to get that down on paper. So lots of pictures and symbols, really few words or short questions and answers. The use of mnemonics um, is a really powerful tool, actually. There's lots of things that we can think of about mnemonics that we've 
remembered a series of um like for example the colors people think about like uh roy g Bibb or richard of york gave battle in vain um those kind of things that you can remember a series of words based on um you know combining the first letter of each word that can work really well and i've got an example of that coming up um also good hints and tips write the topic area on the card somewhere because then when you can as we're going through it you might find oh i've got loads of b1 which is biology one um in a certain pile of my weaker ones that highlights to you that it's a bit of a weaker area so it helps you to diagnose problems there um also highlight the key points in it and color coding color coding again like putting loads of symbols and pictures it makes it really strong um in terms of making connections in your brain so let's move on. So that's just some nice basic rules and things that you need to do to when you're making your flashcard. So here's some examples. I'm going to start off with biology just because it's a nice, easy point for me. Um, you know, and I like simple things because I'm a simple person. So on the one side, what is osmosis? And I've written biology unit two. I've highlighted osmosis in green. And that's I, I see biology as green because it is. Um, on the other side, then I'm going to put the definition of it and I put a little um gradient diagram there as well so again we're linking it with the pictures we're linking it with words uh, and we're linking it with colors as well now that may seem like a lot of writing and it is however this is a really key and crucial definition um, examiners like to have a real thorough definition for something like osmosis so movement of water molecules from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration across a partially permeable membrane that the reason there's that much writing on there is because this is quite a lengthy definition but that is absolute maximum you should never see more than that uh, amount of writing on a flashcard and that's more the exception than the rule um another one um let's have a look at some geography now so geography teachers please don't slate me this is going back from when i did geography at gcse um the four types of erosion so um I've written the four types of erosion there, hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition and solution. And what I've done there is I've taken the first letter of all of those words and made a bit of a mnemonic for it to help me remember. Um, again, mnemonics are a really crucial thing to help us remember things that you might struggle with. Um, I'm sure we can all think of a word that we spell by repeating a little phrase in our head. A very similar sort of thing. Um, and again, geography teacher, really apologise if that's incorrect as per the current data. Uh, but that's what I remember using. Uh, moving on, you could have a look at chemistry. Again, chemistry is yellow because why not? Um, so how does an ionic bond form? I put the unit for chemistry there. Strong electrostatic forces um, and ions are formed by electrons swapping. And underneath, I've given you the, um, the atomic drawings of electron configurations to show how that happens. Uh, again, strengthening those neural connections. Can have a look at maths example again maths teachers please don't hunt me down with pitchforks if you teach this in a different way um calculate the area of a triangle base times height divided by two and then i've even drawn uh, the diagrams there and a little top tip to convert your triangle into a rectangle and then divide that into by two because calculating the area of a rectangle people tend to find a lot more straightforwards um and it helps you identify areas of um, like irregular shapes as well or it can do uh, and finally, we'll have one example from physics. What component is the IV graph for that I've drawn there? And then we should know that's a filament ball. Okay, so it's just lots of um, short questions, short answers, packet full of the pictures and diagrams, and then also color code it with the particular units as well in there for the uh, all different subject areas. So those are some examples. What I want you to do now is, teachers, you're going to pause me to shut me up for a moment for about 10 to 15 minutes. And I want you to make three or four, if you've got the time, of your own flashcards. Remember, really short questions and answers. Pictures are plenty, lots of them. Colour code it and put the module unit title. If you want to rewind the video to have a little look at the uh, examples that I gave earlier, that's fine. But let's use this time now to make three high quality flashcards. OK, once again, teachers pause me and then once you've had a chance to explore them and have a look at the work produced, just restart the video. OK, so hopefully you've had sufficient time to um, show your flashcards to maybe the people next to you or have a bit of a class example uh, as well to see whether, you know, that your revision flashcards are 
uh, going to be useful or not. And we followed those particular cues on the board there. Let's move forward a little bit because it's all well and good making these flashcards, but now we've got to use them. Imagine putting all of your time and effort into earning some money and then you get that money and then you buy you get driving lessons and you pass your driving tests and you earn a bit more money and you buy yourself a car and you earn enough money to you know get some insurance on it and tax it and then you never drive it it's quite it's a massive waste of time it really is you must now use these flashcards um because you put the effort into making them or you will put more effort into making more of them but now you have to use them so this is the best way to do it and this is where i think that people often miss a bit of a trick because they just look at them and then put them down somewhere and then the day before the exam they pick them back up again follow these rules and i promise you flashcard use is going to be really really uh, beneficial to you you then you start to so you pick up your flashcards read the question out loud now you do sound like a crazy person reading them out loud however being crazy is a bit underrated okay i'm crazy and you know i love my life um so you read the question out loud and then you answer the question out loud as well without using your notes. Um, don't cheat and look at the other side of it to give yourself a hint. You just read it out loud and then you answer the question out loud. Once you've done that, you then need to allocate your card to one of these pots. Now, I would advise getting some takeaway tubs from the Chinese, OK, because they're ideally sized. You can get loads of them dead cheap. Um, on one of them, you write red, another one you write amber and then green on the final one. If you get that question correct, and you're 100% happy days, yeah, I knew it was correct before I even flipped it over, you pop that into the green tub. If you get it wrong, um, you know, so wrong it's nearly right again, um, and you clearly don't know the answer, or you just have no idea how to start answering it, you pop it into the red. If you get it partly correct, so let's say like my osmosis definition one, if you've got like two thirds of that definition correct, pop it into the amber one, because it's not quite secure enough, but it's getting there. So you then should start to allocate all of these cards into your pots. And let's say you start off with a, a stack of 20 cards. You should probably see this. Lots in the red pile, a few in the amber and a few in the green. Now, that's normal because we're, at the start of our revision journey, we're not going to be perfect. And if you've chosen your um, subject matter correctly and you've not gone for the dead easy stuff, you've gone for the harder stuff, you should see a bigger pile of red ones. But then you need to re go through all of those red cards on a regular basis. Every single day, you should go through the entire red pile, minimum once a day. Every two or three days, you go through your amber pile. And every week or so, you go through the green stuff. Um, now, here's where it gets really useful. If you pick your red pile up and you get something right out of that red pile, don't move it straight to green. You just promote it up one to amber. If you get something from your amber pile and you get that wrong, you've got to demote that back down to red. If you pick someone out of your red and you get it wrong, you put it back into the red pile because it's clearly not good knowledge for you yet. So you're going to continually go through these. Priority is your red pile, go through it every day, then amber every couple of days, and then once a week, your green pile. So slowly but surely, you should see your piles change in size. Your red pile should shrink and your green pile should start to grow over time showing that you've got more secure knowledge over time than insecure knowledge um if you ever get to a point where your red pile is completely empty then you should make new difficult area of uh, flashcards and those best students are the ones who constantly make new flashcards to top up their red pile um and this is a really key bit in bold in the center of the screen if your red pot has one or two or several cards in it that go through several cycles where you keep getting it wrong take those cards out do a deep dive into what they're for so if you've written the correct um module code or area on it you can quite easily search that up because that's clearly a weak point for you i said that flashcards are a really good way to find out where your weaknesses are that shows you very easily okay um and what i mean by revisit them you could do a bit of a deep dive watching a youtube video and some notes or going to your revision guide or a page of bbc bite size or if you're in serious trouble and you've got a massive um area of real insecurity and you can't figure it out from those resources come and speak to your teachers because it's quite literally what we're paid for um so now what i want to do is to hand the baton back over to you and you get um yeah, good news for you you don't need to hear my irritating voice anymore I want you now to make 
10 flashcards for a module. I don't care what module it's for, what subject area it's for. You might just have to use the books that you've got in your bag with you today or depending on the classroom you're in, if you've got access to IT or whatever. But you need to now start to make a good bank of resources. I would suggest you have 10 flashcards for each module that you do. So there's um, four biology modules in year 10 and another four in year 11. So you need to make sure that you've got um, 10 of each minimum, really. Um, and on the screen, I've shown you some areas to, to gain information from. So there's some uh, great video on the top right. This is probably the best video that I've found from flashcard making. Um, if you just type that URL in, it will bring up teaching. You, you can uh, show that in the lesson if you want to. You can buy these um, on the right hand side of the screen, these pre-made biology card or these pre-made um, flashcards, if you want to, from CGP. But realistically, you, you're kind of cheating yourself out of a bit of, a bit of revision there because the act of you making your own cards is revision in itself so i would always out on the side of writing your own stuff um and being the technological age that we're in and you lot all use your phones because they're always glued to your hand anyway um there's some great apps out there flashcard maker is a really useful one um that anki app flashcards at the bottom for android and iphone as well is also a really good one to use um so i'll leave those on the screen for you if you want to rewind the um the video to find the key points about how to make flashcards you can but let's put a real good effort into this make them make them simple make them color coded use lots of imagery and then the most important bit use them thank you very much for your time today folks and good luck